Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first Wilshire Gun podcast. Uh, we talked about bringing this out for quite a while. I'm really excited to get going on this one. I'm Tyler, the general manager of Wilshire Gun, and I'm here with Jake, the assistant general manager. And uh, interesting times that we're all living in. Uh, <laughs> There's no other way to put it, I don't think, no. especially when you're around the gun world. Right. No, it's it's kind of crazy. So there's a lot of changes have kind of been happening in the gun world, you know, shift in politics, shift in, you know, availability. Yeah. Uh, new stuff coming out, old stuff going away. Yeah. I mean, and that's the actual interesting thing is, uh, you know, manufacturers right now are struggling just to keep up with models they've had out for years and years. So mm-hmm. a lot haven't really brought out anything new, but... Uh, right. But there are a couple that have at least a few new nominal new products this year, and um, when we see them, we don't know. But uh, we thought we'd talk about them a little bit because um, it kind of changes up from some of the doom and gloom that we've had to talk about right. for of late. And then uh, we're going to talk about some new product lines, some new products that we're going to start carrying here at Wilshire for you guys. So, I mean, interesting stuff to discuss. I think. Sure. Yeah. 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 Where I mean, where do you want to start with that? Really? I think to start. Maybe we just talk about some new products that are coming out, and I think there's no place because it is Wilshire, and we have such a great relationship with Sig. Everybody yep. knows that we're an elite dealer, and we have a Sig store here. Um, and because of that, maybe we just start with some of the Sig products. Yeah, I mean, they out. definitely have a couple bangers coming out. They, uh, I was actually just watching yesterday, uh, Phil Strader talking about uh, the 320 Max, and you know they they got with Max Michelle and they developed that gun. They took their X5 Legion. Um, and kind of let him run with it. And they said, you know, Max, what do you want to do with it? And uh, this is kind of his, I guess, kind of prodigy or baby that he's built out of it. And it's got some pretty neat features. Um, and it, it's going to come with the Romeo 3 Max, I believe, yeah, already installed. I think so, yeah. Um, it's got that skeleton trigger. It's still in the TXG grip. Um, they've really updated the slide work on it um, because, you know, he. What he was saying in the video is basically, you know, you're running and gunning, gunning you grab that, that slide all over the place. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to make sure that people were able to to generate, you know, a good grip on the gun from wherever. And if you guys haven't seen it, you know, just type it into Google. It's the Legion Max or the 320 Legion Max. And it'll, you'll, you'll be, definitely be able to come up and see it. You know, what's interesting is it's uh, technically, it's it's under their new Custom Works program. Yeah. So a lot of people may have seen some of the most recent stuff, like they've seen the AXG Scorpions, which are the the, the metal-framed P320s mm-hmm. uh, that are coming out and stuff. So SIG basically said, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to create a lot like the Smith & Wesson, um, you know, Performance Center. We're going to have the Custom Workshop. They do like custom engraving for like units coming back from like Afghanistan or something like custom engraved yeah. guns. They'll do all that stuff too, but then they also make these really unique, cool design guns. So, um, and then elite dealers like us are able to get them and sell them out to the public. And so it's a really interesting concept, but for those that don't know, when we're referencing Max Michelle, he's like the head shooter for SIG. Yeah, along he's with, the team captain and uh, world champion. Yeah, Dana Horner I know is on the team as and well as Lena Mikulik. And congratulations to her, by the way. She was the first woman to ever capture an overall uh, major title for yep. in, um, she just did it down in Florida in the, one of the pro-ams are down there. I can't remember the actual competition, but she did it in uh, in the um, PCC, the Pistol Caliber Carving Division. So that's, that's pretty awesome. She's an amazing shooter. Yep. You got to meet and see her once and just unbelievable shooter but um yeah the 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 custom works things are neat yeah and uh and so it's really built you know when i look at it it's a carry optic division for uspsa absolutely Ipsic that's right really up. what yeah. they developed it for now the one disclaimer i will say on that is it does come equipped with a magwell which is um illegal in carry optics so you have to take yeah, the magwell, mag- off. magwell off but, but i mean they give you the option if you wanted to shoot it it's mm-hmm. essentially as an open gun. Or yeah, I mean, if you wanted class, to run it yeah. as an open gun, uh, really trick it out, you could. Yeah, and, the, and when we say the reference, the TXG uh, modules, that's, that's the, the tungsten. Yeah, that's, that's the right. tungsten, tungsten infused tungsten. Uh, yep. grip. So it's a polymer tungsten weave, and really what it is is it's really, really heavy plastic. Yeah, so it, so you get that weight, that mass, right. to it, help with recoil, really follow up shots, recoil, shoot yeah. it fast, and uh, they're, they're pretty neat. Yeah. So. So yeah. their other big Legion um, addition, uh, I think people will actually be pretty excited for this one. It's the uh, the X Carry. 
So they've been... Yeah, I saw that one too. They've been moving back out from the necessarily manufacturing the X-Carry, but kind of by popular demand, you know, they start to throw these Legion guns out for the guns that people really like. And they're generating an X-Carry off it, which is essentially an X5 uh, into a carry frame. So you're getting a compact slide, full-size grip, uh, and it's also made out of the TXG. So it's, and you get a threaded barrel. And it's one. coming with a threaded, threaded barrel, barrel. Yeah. Um, which they have really stopped producing a lot of guns with threaded barrels. They were making the X-Carry TAC Ops, but they uh, they pulled that back. Yeah, that was two or three years ago yeah. before they pulled that model and off. So yeah. they're definitely coming back into, uh, again, Phil Strader was saying, they you know, they want to get back into the thread, pushing out guns with uh, threaded barrels. Well, it helps that they finally went and got their mod their Mod X silencer yeah. coming out finally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they, they, they haven't basically been producing pistol cans for two years, yeah. you know, as they're trying to get this thing down. And now that they finally have it coming back to market, it, it helps to have a handgun with a yeah. threaded barrel on it so yeah. you can sell the silencers. Yeah, it yeah. definitely makes Tends it a little easier, yeah. But those are, uh, those are definitely two cool offerings out of SIG. It, it, there's another one that I saw too. Was um, it, you know we're looking actually these uh, Sig puts out like a digital catalog. You can find it on their website. Um, so when you go in there, you can look, and a lot of people generate questions because they'll see that the the catalog. Many of these things are not orderable yet. Yeah. So they've announced them. They've given pictures. They're beginning to market them, but we don't know when we'll see them. But one of the interesting ones in there also was the uh, the three eighties. Uh, P365. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll do the 365s, which have always been in 9mm. They're going to do them in 380, right in time to have no 380 ammo available anywhere, which is great. But they're there for people that, you know, just don't want the recoil uh, of a 9mm and may have some limitations there. So you got 380. Yep. And some people just really like shooting 380, which is obviously. That is true. Yeah. I mean, some people, so. that's, that's what they always prefer to carry. Um, you know, you get a lot of your 238, your like um, your Ruger guys that are all about 380s, little little bitty guns. Yep. And yep. so they have you know stashes of 380 somewhere. Now what I did look is I didn't see a size difference, and most most manufacturers go and take it will have um, a size difference. Like the, like for instance, Sig the 238 and the 930. So there there is a little bit of a size difference between the 380 365 and the 9 mil. Oh, there is. Okay. It's very very minor, not enough to like holster compatibility. Most holsters are going to fit. Uh, but what they were saying is they lowered the slide a little bit. They basically reduced the mass in the slide. So you're going to get a slightly shorter slide if I like if I understood that correctly from heights for, from Right. Heights, so they yeah. they literally took like heights out of the slide. So it's going to be a little more thin. So if you think of like a CZ pistol, how their slides are really oh, short. Oh yeah, so, so 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 much lower to right. To, but it's yeah, not. I mean, line. it's not going to be drastic like a CZ. Okay. But they they had to do that for the uh, basically the 380 mass. Like it can't move as much material as a nine mil to ensure functionality. Right. So it's Absolutely. a functionality deal. But he he was sticking them in you know old 365 holsters, and they fit um, they fit just fine. Funny enough, <laughs> he carries a. Uh, Phil Strader carries a keeper's concealment holster. That's his daily carry. Oh yeah, yeah. It's Spencer and the guys yeah. right right here in Oklahoma, just yeah. down the street. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of very cool. Me. Very cool. So, yeah, but, and go ahead. No, I was just uh, I was just saying that you know, Sig Sig has got some interesting stuff. They've got some other product lines that are coming out too. Um, the Sierra Six. Uh, BDX scopes, mm -hmm. uh, which are going to be very interesting. We're getting the very first of those. So if you've been a fan or, or been looking at the BDX system, the Sierra 6, uh, the glass quality is, you know, I, I definitely can tell you that the glass quality is better um, and an uptick from there. And then also uh, you have the ability now to go and take, it's basically like a Christmas tree reticle inside of it. So not only do you have uh, on your BDX dots the ability to set on just the vertical and horizontal where you're gonna have to guess in space. So if you've got a windage hold of, you know, 0.8 MOA or whatever, you know, right, and you've got a drop of 3.2 MOA and you have to guess in space where yeah. those are gonna intersect, now there's gonna be a dot that's actually gonna move to that actual space where you're going to hold with wind and everything, yeah. and you'll have that ability. So they're basically, yeah, they're yeah. starting to uniform that up and get more space. And what scope. was really interesting about it is, in theory, you're going to be able to set on the on the bullet drop, which normally you have the custom BDC, mm -hmm. where you can set your own ranges in the app. Um, you actually now can turn around and 
and have your wind holes if you have a wind constant in it. So you and can, it'll drop down and create a BDC that alleviates with your wind from yeah, the shooting that's position. Super cool. So, I mean, there's some interesting concepts that they're going to keep playing with it with the BDX system. I think that's going to be a real, I mean, once people actually get them and shoot them, I wasn't a real believer until I actually hunted with one. Yeah. And when I did, I was like, man, you know, I can hunt with a regular scope. I can. But this made it infinitely easy. I just run it in the BDC mode, ranged him, comes in. I'm like, I know he's sitting basically at 200 on the nose. Put the 200 BDC custom dot on it with my 6.5, and boom, schwag, done. Uh, it's really interesting, and I definitely see it expanding. Uh, and if people haven't tried it, you need to come in. We'll, we'll show you how to do it. And then if you buy one of stuff, of course, we set it up and help you set it up. So yeah, that's cool. Absolutely. Get your data. So good data in, good results coming out of that's it. That's right, yeah. So, uh, gonna brand change on you, Walther PDP. What do you think about that? Uh, you know, Walther has always been one for me personally. I've always loved the ergonomics of them, a lot like the HK, um, you know, uh, VP nines. That European style grip, hand wrap, or love the ergonomics of them. Mm -hmm. um, functionality, it never. Most of the Walthers have never approached anything that would make me say like, oh, I need a Walther over a Sig or a Glock. Um, but this one, extremely tempting. Um, mostly because I, I really dig the optics mounting platform mm -hmm. and they are already working with CNH Precision who we're, we're gonna talk about a little bit later to go and have plenty of plates and different adapters set for it. And I love both of the two barrel length options, a, like a true duty gun, five inch mm -hmm. gun, and a shorter carry carry type gun. I, I, I think they look good, and by all accounts from people, man, they shoot really, really nice. So I'm very interested to get my hands on one and try it. Yeah, really I think they'll, they'll definitely be. It's good to see that Walther's coming into kind of the future of you know handguns and starting to adopt the, uh, the optics blade on more of a carry gun, not necessarily just competition guns, yeah. like your Q5s and whatnot. And, you know, providing the, the average guy a firearm selection that if you wanted to mount that dot, you can. You don't yeah. necessarily have to, but it's better to have it and not need it kind of deal. And I think they most guns will it. end up that way anyway. You know, I, I for one, kind of take a different position than maybe most people on Walther in that um, I really like what they were trying to do with the metal frame guns. Mm -hmm. I just think that the price point was really disconnected from what you were really getting there. They ended up being, by the time dealers would get them, and with the margins and everything that were in there for us, it just was one of those things, it's really hard to sell them and get a whole lot of value to people at a price point that they really see a difference versus some of the other stuff out there. Um, so the steel frame guns and stuff are really neat, but man, it was kind of hard to do a value on them. But, the, uh, but this one, I, I think it go, takes a step back into what Walter does traditionally very, very well and it really amplifies and builds on it into a true to duty carry gun, yeah. which I really, I'm very interested in seeing. I really yeah, like. I'm, I'm pretty interested to see how it, what what part of the market it captures, you know, the size of its share that it captures. Um, because and the price point on it, to, not to interrupt, but the price point on it puts it right in line with all of your other basic like P320s, mm -hmm. um, your, your, your Glock 19, your Glock 17s. Yeah. Um, uh, your FN 509s, most of your carry guns. So that's actually what I was going to say. I don't think I don't think you're going to dethrone, you know, necessarily Glock or Sig um, with this gun, but I do think it's going to jump in there right around, you know, your FNs and maybe your MMPs, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's going to kind of exist in that that area right there, which not you know not king of the hill, yeah. but right not far from the top. I mean, if we hop in our magic time machine, I thought that like the CZP10s were going to do that mm -hmm. years ago, and then they just kind of fub the rollout on getting the optic equipped P10s yeah. out there to kind of move into that space, and they're just not plentiful enough. But I think Walther has a real chance to do it with this one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if they keep on top of it and they make sure that people can get it in their hands, yeah, I definitely think they could they could take a pretty sizable bite out of mm -hmm. you know the handgun market here. Speaking of an interesting brand that's been working real hard to change itself, revitalize, and kind of bring to market what people really want. Staccato, who we carry, yep. um, and sell a lot of good, good relationship with. Staccato is excellent quality guns. They're changing their lineup this year and bringing a lot of things that people have been asking for for a while that I know you're really interested in talking about. Yeah, so uh, one of their big ones is uh, their barrel options. They're changing, um, they're changing kind of the way they roll those out. So. 
uh, production fell a little bit behind, to my understanding. Um, and so they started producing guns with stainless barrels, uh, pushing those out at the you know the twenty four ninety nine price point for duos and nineteen ninety nine or somewhere right around there for the non cut. Yeah, for like your C twos yeah. and your and your and your staccato P's, and I think it was just kind of basically at the end of last year standard that everything was a stainless barrel yeah. that was coming and out. So stainless bull barrel. This is kind of an interesting concept because they're they're kind of so. STI before they were staccato, kind of, they had a little bit of a customization like option. I mean, you could really, you could spend a lot of money and build a you know a gun that was very unique. Or to send you. your gun back and get it retrofit mm -hmm. and get it. Th yeah, there's a lot of options. And so there. they're kind of taking that that idea with these duty guns, not in any kind of scale that they used to, but they're saying you know you can pick kind of some of your parts now. Um, and they got you know barrel options and slide options, um, and they're also bringing out threaded barrels. Yeah, so that's what I'm excited about. A lot of people will be really excited about that. So you know you can you can purchase a gun. They've brought down the price a little bit to compensate for you know just the stainless barrel, but then for a hundred bucks more you can bump it up to a DLC barrel, diamond like coating, and that was what they were coming back with two years ago I yeah believe. because the 2019 gun series um all of the, uh, you know the original staccato mm -hmm. line from 2019 which we actually have one you know right here yeah um so this is actually mine uh staccato p um all the barrels were dlc mm -hmm. um a, a standard in them and then last year they went to the stainless but now the dlc's coming back they're, and uh, yeah they're making they're making them available if you want that like yeah. you're not stuck with uh, you know, this is how the gun comes. Go somewhere else. Yeah. They're providing those options for people, so you can house. order them with, uh, you know, a, a, a stainless bull barrel is going to come standard. If not, you can get a DLC for like a hundred bucks more. Yep. It's and then you bucks. can for a stainless threaded for a couple hundred bucks more. Yep. Or for like three hundred more, you can go and get a stainless or excuse me, a DLC. Threaded. DLC threaded. And that's kind of how they jump. It's in literally there. a stair step model, model where you yeah. know, hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks. Yeah. Um, and I'm really, because I, I think they're excellent su uh, suppressor hosts. They, oh, yeah, they're, I bet they're, they're they would be. suppressor hosts because of the unlock time, dwell time, yeah. and when it's moving, so that they end up going and taking you end up. I mean, I'm very, I've been wanting a threaded barrel again on it without having to do like a hand-fitted Jarvis or something mm -hmm. in mine myself, something from the factory. So I'm interested to see what they come out with. I, I definitely think it would make a pretty cool guy gun with a suppressor on it. You could definitely, you know, some, some old school video game guys like the hitman guns like the silver ballers or something like that yeah. from you know, yeah because actually games. the slides you can get the slides chrome too mm -hmm. i saw a really interesting picture from one of their um you know kind of their influencer type things on on instagram and stuff that had um a dlc coated barrel but a stain like a chrome slide and then a dlc um you know lower portion yeah of, you know basically reverse base yeah like a reverse colored thing and then like a black optic put onto it off of a plate and i thought man that looks really sharp like all yeah. together that looks really cool yeah. so you can uh you can do that too you can upgrade your gun to that uh, yeah. i think it's four and six hundred bucks for a regular barrel and a threaded barrel yeah depending on you can get the chrome slide so yeah. that's that's a pretty cool deal so i mean really that's a a lot of the the new products that we were looking at wanted to talk about on this one as new as manufacturers announce more stuff I mean, we'll obviously address it and talk about it in here, but uh, interesting new stuff that is coming out, but a lot of a lot of manufacturers really are just, they're struggling just to keep up with what they've got so far. And mm -hmm. so a lot of people kind of, we're gonna not sink the R&D dollars into stuff, and we're just gonna, we're gonna go and keep up with production or expand production in order to get enough goods out there to meet demand on the market, so. Yeah. Also, um, we hope that this was enjoyable and we hope that uh, you guys get a little bit of something out of it. Uh, we're always looking for topics and, and things that you're interested in that you guys really want to hear about. So, uh, you know, drop, drop, drop something in the comments, send us an email, uh, give us a holler when you see us around the store and say, hey, let's discuss this. It's some interesting topics we need to talk about. And, uh, and we'll be more than happy to do it. We really, uh, anything in the gun world, we're not going to go and take and say is off limits. So it's, it's the interesting stuff that we all discuss that's about our passion and our hobby. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's important we talk about it and it's important that we have a forum to be able to go and take and discuss it. Sure. Uh, if you guys do want to send in questions, send them to ishoot at wilshiregun.com uh, with the subject line podcast question. 
and we will try to get to it when we can. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But thanks again for joining us, and uh, look forward to seeing you back for the uh, next episode. Yep, take it easy, guys. See you guys.